Good morning, Georgiana. Welcome to this morning's Take 5. We're going to come to you this morning with our devotion from the book of Job. Uh, the book of Job is one of those unusual books that people don't like to read, mostly because we don't want to grasp hold of the fact that a righteous man could actually fall into the hands of suffering, right? So this is an Old Testament book. It's really a poetic, dramatic story, uh, similar to what would be a New Testament parable that Jesus would tell. Uh, it's really lengthy in nature, and it really deals with a lot of universal questions uh, similar to why do the righteous suffer. And I think part of the reason that it's hard for us to read is that we never want to imagine ourselves in that position and that God would allow that to happen maybe for a greater good. And so our passage literally comes from the book of Job, chapter 23. It reminds us we're kind of middle of the story. Job has lost everything. And now his inner circle of advisors, his wife and his best friends, have all be decided that, that somebody's got to be bl to blame for this. It must be Job's fault. And Job should just succumb and admit that he has struggled. But in this passage, we find Job searching for God. And here's what it says. Then Job replied to his friends, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling... I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. And I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say. So part of the problem is, is that he's searching for God. Because here's what he says next in verse 8. But if I go to the east and he is not there, if I go to the west and I do not find him, when he's at work at the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet are closely following his steps. I have kept his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. And so part of what is happening is that he wants to be able to make a defense of his righteousness to God. And so it says that he does not see him even though he knows God is present. And part of the reason for that is he is searching for God on his own terms. He wants to set the agenda. He wants to create the court, if you will. And so he looks for him in the north and the east and the west and the south. And he does not find him because he does not find him on his own terms. And then it turns. And he says, but I have not lost hope. I have trusted in his commands. Everything that comes off the lips of God, I have trusted. And I love that last line that says, I have treasured the word of his mouth more than my daily bread. Again, conjures images of Jesus talking about being the bread of life. And then the Lord's Prayer, which tells us, give us this day our daily bread. What Job is trying to say is, in despite of all of this, I have not given up hope that God is sovereign. It is not working out the way that I want it. And don't we all have those moments where it's just not working out the way we want it? But do we acknowledge in that moment, God, you are sovereign, that you might know better than I, that you might have a plan that is bigger than anything I could imagine. Can I sit in this moment that I do not like in order to see the work that you're doing come to fruition. This is the story of the book of Job, right? And so I pray today as you have this devotional time together that you would uh, think about the words of the Lord, the commands of the Lord, the, uh, the obedience he calls us to and be steadfast to that, not wavering from that despite the circumstances, despite the justifications you feel for your behavior and the things that you think justify why you did and didn't do what you did. Be still and trust in the words of the Lord. So why I want you to know that I hope you have a great week. I hope this blesses you. I hope that you spend some time in what is considered a really challenging, difficult book. And I hope this helps you unpack this passage. Love you, church.